All right, folks, this video is all about clothing. I spent a lot of time in the backcountry and actually recently completed 74 days in the British Columbia wilderness alone. Uh, and so I'm gonna go over all of the clothing that I took with me, everything from base layer to boots. So we're gonna start with the base layers. All right, so I have been a fan of merino wool for well over a decade since I moved west and started hunting in the western mountains. And so when I went to BC to be on the television show alone, that's what I took. I had two pairs of these First Light uh, long merino bottoms, and then I had a couple of their uh, merino tops. So I like wool for a couple of different reasons. One is it's quiet. So anybody that follows my content knows that I'm primarily a traditional bow hunter. And so getting close, like very, very close to big game animals is a big part of what I do. And so the noise that my clothing makes is a big consider, is something that I really take into consideration when I'm selecting the things that I'm going to be wearing. Uh, another thing is, another big thing is the scent. Um, so I get that question a lot, like what do I do for scent control? And the only thing that I really do is wear wool clothing, wool base layers, wool secondaries. Um, most of the stuff that I wear is going to be wool. Now wool doesn't allow the bacterial growth uh, and accumulation that can cause things like synthetics and certainly cotton to smell very, very bad uh, after a couple of days. I cannot say enough about the, the ability of wool or merino wool in, in particular to not stink after a while. Uh, when I went out into, uh, into BC for the show alone, I had two pair of these um, First Light bottoms and then I had a couple of the tops, the merino tops with me. When I put these things on, once it got cold, I put these things on and I did not take them off for two months. I wore these bottoms straight for two months and when I took them off, they didn't stink. Not any more than, you know, just being around the camp. Uh, but they didn't smell like BO. Uh, if you tried that with synthetics or cotton or anything like that, you would be absolutely unbearable to be around. You'd stink so bad. And so for scent control, that's it guys, that's all I do. Because, you know, scent control is a big thing with whitetail hunters and I get that, but the type of hunting that I do, when I'm in the backcountry for, you know, weeks at a time, it's just not, it's not something that you can do. You can't change your clothes every day. You can't take a bath every day. You can't, you know, scent control that normally people think about when they, when they think about scent control just is not possible in those types of situations. And so Merino wool, that's where it's at. So the other thing uh, that I love about Merino is, and just wool in general, is if it does get damp, it will still keep you warm uh, as opposed to cotton. Cotton is a terrible, terrible material for uh, backcountry activities. If, if you were wearing cotton and you get wet, it's going to take forever to dry out. It loses all of its uh, insulating abilities and wool doesn't do that. It, uh, it doesn't dry out as quickly as some of the synthetics, but compared to cotton, it does dry out relatively quickly. So I took a couple of the, uh, the Merino top base layers. The one that I have on here, this is the arrow wool, just a short sleeve that I have underneath this shirt. I had uh, a quarter zip here. This is kind of like the mid-weight stuff that I took. And then I also took a, a lightweight, one of their lightweight base layers uh, for the top. So we'll move on to the socks. So I took a, an assortment of socks, everything from fairly light to pretty heavy, and I'll go through the heavy ones here. So the lightweight socks that I took were these, uh, these lighter weight ones from Vortex. Uh, I like these because they've got a little bit more padding on the bottom. The top is really thin and light, and so your feet don't get super warm. And I wear merino wool socks year round. Doesn't matter if it's 100 degrees outside, I'm wearing wool socks. And one of the big reasons for that is that wool doesn't it doesn't hold the moisture like a cotton sock will. And so it doesn't, um, like if I wear cotton socks and my feet get damp, my feet get sore, but it doesn't get, they don't get sore like that uh, with, these, uh, with these wool socks. 
And so for the late season, I had a couple of these heavy bison wool socks from the bison wool company, but I ordered my boots big enough so that I would have room for these heavy socks in there. But these are really nice. They, they come way up, your, uh, way up your calves like that, which helps to keep your feet warm. Um, but I was, I was impressed with these. I really enjoyed having these along with me. So we'll move on to the upper, the tops here. <clears throat> so I had a couple, again, more, more merino with me. This one is a button up. I think it's called a Henley. This is the heavyweight merino top from First Light. I wore this thing a lot. Uh, also, I had, I think, the mid-weight here, um, zip-up hoodie, also from First Light. Um, I, wore, I wore all of these, uh, all of these merino layers a lot, and then when it got really cold, I put basically everything on except for, uh, once I get down here, I'll talk about my, uh, my pullover that I had with me. So one of the things that I really like about these upper, these tops from First Light is that I have long arms. And so you can see with this shirt, it kind of rides up my arms a little bit. That's not a problem with these. Uh, they have these thumb holes in them you can use um, if you want to. I, I use those sometimes, but not very often. But the thing with all of these First Light tops is their, I think it's called the shooter cut. But anyway, the, leave, the sleeves are cut long enough so that they don't ride up your arms when you're, when you're messing around. I really like that. So this one is the Furnace EXP 350. I think this is the heaviest uh, merino top that they have. But uh, these are pretty durable. They're, they're fairly stretchy and super, super warm. I really like this one. So the other top that I had with me is this old beat up Woolrich button-up shirt here. A friend of mine gave me this at a bow hunting banquet, I don't know, years ago. Uh, but this shirt has been through some adventures. It's all patched up. Uh, I like, I really like this shirt. It's kind of like a, a sentimental thing for me. But if you watched when I was, uh, when I shot that deer, this is the shirt that I had on. This, what I have on here now, this is actually, I think this is pretty much exactly what what I had on when I shot that deer. Um, but again, wool is quiet, uh, it's warm. All right, so moving on, we're gonna cover the pants. Now I took two different pair of pants out there. I took a lightweight pair, which is these uh, obsidian pants here from First Light, and then I also took a heavy wool pair from Woolrich here, and I'll talk about these here in just a minute. Anybody that's watched my late season stuff has seen me wearing these pants. I've had these things forever. But these lightweight pants, like I said, these are obsidian pants here. Uh, I took these for the early season. I took these for bow hunting. I've been wearing these pants for, I don't know, probably five or six years uh, on my early season uh, elk hunts. And when you combine these with the merino uh, bottom, the long john bottoms uh, underneath these things, you can actually uh, hunt effectively in some fairly cold stuff uh, with just these two things. Uh, once it gets really cold, I'd move to the, the heavier pants. The reason that I took these uh, as opposed to a more durable synthetic was simply due to the fact that they're lightweight and they're quiet. Uh, I've never found a synthetic that is as quiet as these, uh, these merino pants. And as I said before, one of my big concerns uh, when I'm bow hunting is the noise that my clothing is making. I, I need something that's going to be quiet and all those these are a little bit more delicate than uh, say a, a, a like a synthetic pant or a more robust pants uh, like a like a briar pants or something like that. These are quiet and quiet is incredibly important for me. These heavier wool pants are also pretty doggone quiet, but for a lightweight early season pants, these are about as quiet as you're gonna get. Now, when I talk about my gaiters here, um, I'll talk about a way to, to kinda beef these things up a little bit so that they are a little bit more durable. All right, so my late season pants here, these are a heavy pair of wool pants that I've got from Woolrich, and I don't even know if you can still get these things. Uh, but I've had these for probably 
10 years or so and they i mean they're just so tough they wear like iron um, they're heavy but for late season hunting uh, when you combine these with some of the uh, the base layers the the long base layer here you can be out in some very very cold stuff when it was late november i had both pair of these uh, merino bottoms and these on top and i was I, I never felt like i was cold and if you've watched any of my late season hunting uh, you'll see me out in this type of stuff i was on an elk hunt there oh probably four or five years ago where it was negative 13 fahrenheit i had these on uh, i had my merino base layer and then i had you know of course my other stuff on but uh, i was just fine in those very cold temperatures like that all right so i also took a couple of pair of gloves i took just a, a pair of leather work gloves and these are the hd extreme work gloves i can't uh i guess if you just googled hd extreme you could probably find these things but i went through several pair of uh of leather gloves trying to find the right ones to take uh, and these i like these they fit good they're nice and and soft and supple <clears throat> but it's hard to find a good pair of of leather gloves that fit well and uh, are soft and and durable but these fit my hands anyway my hands pretty good so i had those and then the the probably one of the best piece of gear that i took were these gloves right here and i actually had to order these once i got to bc because i didn't have these and i saw that coulter had a pair of these so coulter's from alaska he's in with all the you know subsistence fishing and and, and knows what's going on up there he had a pair of these and apparently this is what everybody wears in like the fish canneries uh, up there in alaska but these were awesome they're i don't know what they're made out of some sort of vinyl out exterior but then they've got these kind of uh, uh, synthetic wool looking stuff on the inside they fit well they're very durable they're warm they're 100 percent waterproof um, but these if you're going to be in and out of the water uh, late season or if you're trapping or something like that when it's cold these things i, I mean i can't say enough about these gloves the markings on these are almost worn off I can't tell the company name, but on here there it says Tim Res, T E M R E S 282. So I'm sure if you Googled that, uh, you could find these things. But like I said, these come highly, highly, highly recommended. So moving on to hats, I had two hats with me. Uh, one was my, uh, my merino beanie here. I wore this thing a lot during the late season and I also wore it just about every night. Once it started to get cold, I'd put it on my head, um, help keep my head warm. A lot of the, the heat that you lose is out of your head. But another thing that I like about it is you can tape and take a nap during the middle of the day and just pull that thing right down over your eyes. It's like an eye shade, makes everything nice and dark, makes it nice to take a nap. But that, uh, I wore that one a lot, really liked it. And then the other one that I took was my old ball cap. This was actually, it had a Three Rivers archery patch on there, but they made me take that off. Um, but this thing's almost like oil tin cloth now, it's so greasy. <laughs> but I wore this just about every day during the early season. And most of the hunting season, or most of the hunting videos that you guys see me do, I'll have one of the caps like this on, or this Vortex cap over here. But I had a couple of people ask, like, why would you take a baseball cap? But uh, a baseball cap is, I see it anyway, like a multi-purpose tool you, uh, you just wear on your head. You know, of course, it's a hat, it's an eye shade, it's a fly swatter, it's a berry picking basket. I use this thing all the time for like a hot pad for picking up, uh, picking up hot pots and things like that. I mean, your imagination is basically the... Uh, uh, the limiting factor on what you can use a ball cap for. I use it, I put my flies in there when I'm fishing, hook stuff in there, um, keep stuff in the hat band. But yeah, I'm a big fan of baseball caps. So I also, they let us take a schmog and early on, this one's, I've had this one for a while, it's pretty beat up. 
it's kind of torn. You can see it's got some mouse holes in it right here. I actually, uh, when, I, when I made all the jerky from my deer, I put a lot of the, uh, most of the jerky in this thing right here and hung this up in my bear hang. And then towards the end, um, once it got super cold and I figured all the bears were hibernating, I actually brought this inside the shelter and just hung it up inside the shelter. But I also use this for foraging for, uh, uh, for mushrooms. You can, uh, you can take this thing and put it around your, uh, tie it around your waist right here and use it as a kind of a foraging basket to put things in there. Uh, but schmog is, uh, is very, very handy. You know, if anybody's out there that knows where I can find a schmog made out of merino wool, I would love to have one. But all the schmogs that I can find, they're all made out of cotton. But I would love to find one out of lightweight uh, merino. All right, so we'll move on to the uh, the gators that I took. So they did allow us to take some gators with us. Um, these are the Bramblers from First Light, and I've had these for a number of years. So gators, I think, are something that's not very well understood. Uh, I use gators for a number of different reasons. Um, one of them, late season, of course, when you're uh, when you're walking around out in the snow, it keeps snow and stuff from getting up under your pants. Um, if you're walking through wet brush, it keeps the uh, it keeps the bottoms of your pants from getting wet, keeps that water from going through and getting down into your boots. Uh, I wear these. Uh, I take them with me all the time when I'm elk hunting, even in early season. And a lot of times, what I'll do is I'll put them on. You know, where we camp, there's a fairly sizable creek that I have to cross sometimes, and so I'll put them on cross the creek and then uh, take them off once I get to the other side. So these are waterproof. I think they've got, um, I don't know, they've got some sort of waterproof stuff in them. <clears throat> uh, Gore-Tex maybe, I'm not sure. But anyway, I'll put them on and they go way up above my boots, almost to my uh, the top of my calf here. And I can cross deep water, like uh, water that's way over my boots with these on and not get my boots wet. So one of the things, one of the benefits of gators that people don't really understand is they, believe it or not, they help keep your feet warm. You know, they don't, they don't cover your boots, but they do cover your, uh, your calves and your shins here. And so the blood that's flowing to your feet, it just helps keep that warm. And I can tell a big difference when it's really cold outside, I can tell a huge difference between when I have gators on and when I don't have gators on just because it's helping to keep that blood flow going to your, your feet and your toes warm. So I'll go ahead and just put this on just so you can see how it works. So another benefit of gators is with these pants, it helps like if you are going through down timber or something like that, it keeps, you know, these are very durable. This is, has some sort of heavyweight cordura or something like that. And so you're not going to poke a hole in your, in your gators. Uh, so it helps to protect the bottom of your pants legs. Just hook that on your boot laces. So if you're going to be hunting in the mountains, uh, early season, late season, I would highly recommend, I carry these, like I said, I take them with me uh, during the early season. And of course, uh, during the late season when it's, uh, when there's snow on the ground. All right, so we'll move on to boots. So I took two pair of boots with me. Uh, I took a pair of uninsulated lightweight boots here. These are the, uh, the Timberlines from Schnee's. Uh, I really like these things. They're, they're comfortable. They're relatively, as far as like a hiking boot goes, they're relatively lightweight. Uh, one of the big things that I like about these are these lace locks right here. Uh, these lace locks actually work. Like I've had a lot of other hiking boots and the lace locks just don't work very good. But these have like a, a cam type system. So when you pull uh, your laces and, and bring them over, that, that those lace locks actually lock the, uh, um, lock the laces in place like they're supposed to. And this upper here could come untied 
and your lace locks would still keep it tight down here. So I really like that feature of these boots. Um, they're, they're really lightweight. I beat these things up. I wore them the whole time I was on alone. And the, like a, on a lot of the boots, these, this rind on the outside sometimes will start coming off. These things are still just as solid as the day that I got them. All right, so we'll move on to my pack boots, my late season boots. So if you watch the show, you'll notice that a lot of people choose to take um, those Arctic muck boots. And I've never had the Arctic muck, so I can't really uh, comment on on them beyond that most people take them i do i am a fan of muck boots I, i've got a pair i really like them for hog hunting in the south things like that but those are the lightweight boots uh, i didn't want to go with the arctic muck boots because it's a one piece boot uh, if you are out and you work up a sweat they get damp uh, or something happens you get them wet inside there's no way to dry that out and so i wanted a pack boot that had a removable liner. Uh, and so what I ended up going with these, uh, these pack boots from Schnee's, I had some recommendations on these from guys that spend a lot of time out in the field and very cold country. And so I ordered these up and was very, very happy with them. Uh, they've got rubber bottoms, they've got leather tops, they're triple stitched around the bottom here. And so water's not gonna get in there. Now, before I went out there, I made sure to really seal these up well. Uh, so I put a lot of boot grease, a lot of boot sealer on here, made sure that they were sealed up really well. And then, uh, of course, you've got these liners that go in there, these uh, felted wool liners. The reason I wanted these liners to come out is, you know, if, if you do happen to go in over your boot or if you get sweaty and these get damp, you can pull them out you can set them by the fire, you can set your boots up by the fire and, and dry these things out. And it's, you, it's hard to do that with a one piece boot. But these were really nice. Uh, my feet never felt like I got super cold. You know, we had some temperatures out there that were single digit. It never got super cold out there, but we did have some single digit temperatures. Uh, but these boots, uh, I, was, I was very, very happy. And like I said, you combine these with the, uh, the gaiters there and you've got a, a pretty solid combo. But these are highly recommended pack boots from Schnee's. All right, so I also took uh, some rain gear. And the, the rain gear that I chose was I wanted something that was going to be 100% waterproof and for me that is this heli hansen it's like a pvc exterior uh i think this is the heli hansen workwear um Impertech, something like that but you can google it this is the lightweight stuff and it is absolutely you could stand out in a torrential downpour in this stuff and be bone dry the only problem with this is that if if you're out working hard you're gonna sweat. It does not, it, this is not breathable at all. But as far as like a sure enough, keep you dry rain wear, this is it right here. I also took a pullover. This is a snow camo, uh, just a fleece uh, pullover hoodie. And this is from Natural Gear. I took this for late season bow hunting. Uh, I didn't know what I was going to be getting into out there. And I actually ended up, I didn't wear this a lot. I used it, I used it mostly to sleep on. I used it kind of as padding, but I did use it uh, a couple of times late season. Uh, I wore it when I went out looking for that lion a couple of times. Um, but this was this is nice and heavy. It's not waterproof. Uh, so if you get rained on or if you get wet, heavy snow on it, uh, it's going to soak in. Uh, it's going to take it a little while to soak in, but um, you will get wet in this thing. But as far as a snow camo pattern, um, something for late season hunting, this is, this is pretty nice. I'm going to use this in, a coming, in an upcoming uh, late season whitetail hunt that we've got uh, that we do up here. And the jacket that I took that uh, most of you have seen me on the show wearing, this is a, the Lost Pass Parka from Kafaru. I like this thing a lot. Uh, I've gotten a lot of questions on this. 
but this thing is super super warm it's well made it's got this uh, this cordura stuff on the front so if you're busting through brush and things like that it's got that uh, it's very durable and then also on the sleeves you know if you're crawling around it's uh, it's you're not going to have to worry about tearing it up and like i said it's super warm the only drawback to this coat that i found is it's it's fairly loud and so for the type of bow hunting that i do uh it's you're probably not going to see me wearing this coat when i'm trying to stalk up on an animal i just take the coat off um and uh, and make my stalk from there strip down to something like uh my like my my wool that i've got on here but as far as just a a good good all around warm late season coat this thing right here is bomber all right so i think that's pretty much everything but like i said i mean i spend a lot of time in the woods i spend a lot of time in the back country in pretty harsh environments and i spent 74 days out on uh, the shores of chilco lake in the bc wilderness with what you see here uh, everything that i took was informed by years of hunting, fishing, camping in the Western mountains. And so I didn't have to really think a lot about the gear that I took. I basically just took the stuff that I would normally take on a late season bow hunt. Uh, and everything that I took uh, worked out super, super well. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you got any questions about anything, please just let me know, leave me a comment, uh, or you can get in touch with me on my website. But we will see you guys next time.